Hey everybody, it's Bill Bradley from Mediterranean Living and today we are speaking with Brittany Nickerson and we're here at her farm, uh, the Thyme Herbal Gardens. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brittany is an amazing herbalist and she wrote the Herbalist Kitchen which just came out fairly recently. When did that come out? About a year ago, just over a year ago. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing book. You can find the review on our site at Mediterranean Living. But today we are focusing on oregano mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to make an oregano pesto. But first, can you just tell me a little bit about what some of the health properties of oregano are? Yeah. Um, there's most of these culinary herbs that are featured in recipes from the herbalist kitchen have a really wide range of use. And I think that it's interesting to think about the historical uses of culinary herbs because they're used in cooking, but they're also used in the home pharmacy. And so it's the frequency of use and the availability of them that makes them so perfect for mm -hmm. cooking. Um, and I think that it's kind of like, what came first? Were they cooking herbs or medicinal herbs? And maybe it's hard to tell. Um, but with oregano, we see that as it's a perfect example of that. Um, and we see its use in the home pharmacy for colds and flus being a real major use there. So it's a diaphoretic, which means that it brings heat from the core of the body out to the peripheral and really dilates the blood vessels and just helps move things. And diaphoretic, technically speaking, means it makes you sweat. And so it's the sweating process that brings out the heat and the moisture. And then as the sweat cools, it, it dries, it cools you off. So that's really useful in fever. Um, it's also useful on hot days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's also a bronchial dilator and helps to expectorate mucus. So it has a long history of use for lung conditions. So, and, and oftentimes in the cold flu area. Um, a lot of people know oregano also as a really potent antibacterial and antifungal herb. Um, it's become popular for that oregano oil for colds and mm -hmm. flus and whatnot. Um, and it does, it both has a antimicrobial action on the digestive system, on the system overall and on the lungs. So it's great for preventing lung infections, also helping to expectorate as we talked about. Um, and overall, I mean, just has so many uses. So folks are buying oregano oil now, it's very popular, but you can get the same benefit from an, a cup of oregano tea or an oregano infused honey um, or many other home prepared preparations just in your kitchen. Um, and a lot of those I talk about in recipes from the Herbalist Kitchen. Something I always wondered about because uh, I do use a lot of herbs and spices in cooking, mm -hmm. and of course in the Mediterranean diet, there's a lot of herbs that are used, but how much do you actually need to use for it to be medicinal? It's such a good question. It's probably the most common question that I get. Um, and I think that there's two ways we need to think about culinary herbs. I think one is what is the larger health benefit that we're looking for? So in the examples that I talked about before, if we're really looking to curb the symptoms of a cold or the flu or work with lung congestion, we need a medicinal dose. We need a good strong cup of tea. Um, we need like 30 to 60 drops of an alcohol extract. We need a tablespoon of an herbal infused honey, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the other reasons that herbs, culinary herbs are used in cooking is because they support digestion. And all culinary herbs, any, I mean, if you just named 20 right now, they would all have the health benefit of supporting the digestive system. Some of them are more specific to certain things. Oregano in particular um, has its antimicrobial properties, which really help the um, bacterial balance in the gut. Um, and it also is really great for supporting the digestion of fats and oils. Um, but what they do is they kind of stimulate circulation to the GI tract, which improves breakdown and absorption of nutrients. And then they also relax the GI tract, which helps to expel gas and also helps to better extract nutrients. So they help with symptoms and with absorption of nutrients. And I always tell my students, we are not we are what we eat, we are what we digest. And the addition of culinary herbs into the diet helps with the digestion piece. So we're actually absorbing the nutrients from all these good foods. And I think that's one of the beauties of the Mediterranean diet and a lot of traditional diets that use a lot of herbs. And so in answer to the question, it's like if we want to support cold or flu, we need a large medicinal dose. But if we're just wanting to support our digestion, all we need to do is taste the presence of the herb. So this recipe today, this um, pesto is a combination. If you ate a couple tablespoons of this pesto, you would both be getting a medicinal dose and that culinary dose that supports digestion. Awesome, get it all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I love pestos for that reason and folks can make pesto with any herb. You know, we get stuck on basil sometimes, but you could add parsley in or yeah, anything. Great, so well, why don't we start making the uh, recipe and then we'll Great. talk a little bit about 
what we would use this with. Okay, so. wonderful. So um, to start with, we just have our fresh oregano leaves. And mm -hmm. we're late summer here, so a lot of the oregano is flowering already. Um, and so we just took the underneath part, the kind of more tender leaves. Um, or you can cut your oregano back and get a second flush, and then you have a lot of tender things to work with. Um, and one of the things that I really like to share with folks is that I try as often as possible not to wash my herbs. Um, because one of the most powerful health benefits of all culinary herbs are the presence of aromatic oils. Um, and you'll notice that any herb you cook with smells great, right? Basil, thyme, sage, oregano. And when you wash it, you actually wash away some of that potency. So I'm always trying to clean, pick the cleanest ones. Um, after it rains is not the best time to harvest herbs, but we don't always have a choice. So sometimes you might need to wash them or even just brush them with a dish towel or, or with your hands. Um, what about the ones that you get at the store? Yeah, yeah it's a good question. Um, I have a tendency to still not wash, but, I, but it depends. Like a lot of herbs now come in clamshells. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's happened before they got in the clamshells, but I know that everybody who put them on the shelf and almost bought them but didn't buy them hasn't touched them. Right. So I have a tendency to not wash. Um, but parsley, cilantro, dill, open bunches, I always wash. Okay. Yeah, but it's totally up to people's personal preferences. If people feel more comfortable to wash them from their garden or the farmer's market or the clam shop, they should always do what they're most comfortable with. Yeah. Awesome. Um, also, harvesting on a sunny day, the volatile oils will be more potent and the flavor will be more vibrant. But again, it's like the beauty of a kitchen garden is you harvest any time. So... I harvest in the rain all the time. I harvest dirty herbs all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is our um, oregano leaves. We picked them from the tougher stems, but we weren't too um, concerned. We did include quite a few tender stems, and that's a time-saving thing that's definitely worth um, following. So we have two cups of sort of loosely medium-packed oregano leaves, okay. and we're going to put those in our food processor. And we had that conversation earlier. To chop or to food process your pesto, it's sort of, you know, the traditional authentic way is to chop it. Um, I use the mortar and pestle. And, yes. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes when I have the time, I love to do that. And I do think it's better, as yeah. you agree. Yeah. Um, but we figure most of you all will probably be using a food processor. So. Yeah. Time-wise, it's, yeah. it's a lot quicker to do it in a food processor. <laughs> Um, we're going to add, um, the recipe calls for two or three cloves of garlic. We're going to do two because they're pretty big, but it's a really a matter of preference. Um, and then for our seed, our nuts, we're going to be using two different seeds. We have toasted sunflower and toasted pumpkin seeds. And I toasted them separate. Um, and I think I mentioned to you, you can toast them together, mm -hmm. but it just... Um, makes it a little bit better to toast them separate because right, then they're, they're different sizes. And, exactly, yeah. 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 Um, and you're toasting really just till golden brown, stirring continually. The pumpkin seeds pop and tell you when they're ready. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't put cheese in this. One of the things I talk a lot about in recipes from the Herbalist Kitchen is um, this idea that the addition of herbs into the diet should really serve as a condiment. So that we, and creating things like this that we can make ahead and either freeze or keep in the fridge um, are really helpful because we can just put a little bit with our food to add in these complex flavor profiles, do things like support digestion, get medicinal doses of the herbs into our diet without having to each time we cook do that food prep. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the reasons why I don't add cheese to this recipe is that I want to keep it really simple and really um, able to be applied to a lot of different food-based situations. Right. Um, I feel like cheese makes the flavor more distinctive. Um, and, and you could always add cheese to it later after you've course, frozen yeah. it and thawed it and right. add some cheese later. Yeah, and folks could add cheese to this recipe too if they want to, mm -hmm. but the recipe doesn't actually call for it. So we have our toasted seeds, oregano, garlic, and then we're gonna add a little salt, and that's just to taste, um, and some freshly ground pepper also to taste for folks. And then of course the olive oil, which is the central um, thing, both for nutrition, as you know, and also for the preservation of it, right? Like it keeps the fresh herbs mm. longer. Yes. Um, and so traditionally that's a big piece of it. So we have this delicious olive oil, thanks to you and those in Crete who, <laughs> who prepared it for us. We're gonna do a half a cup um, of the olive oil. That's a nice amount of olive oil. Yeah, and the flavor like really comes through. So, you know, folks, of course, want to use a really delicious olive oil. Um, and that's one of the beauties, again, of these recipes. And, of course, using a fresh olive oil, the medicinal property of that is the, if you have a little burn in your throat, it's a strong anti-inflammatory that I'm sure 
adds to the medicinal quality of exactly. The, of the so organ. now we could use our oregano pesto for a sore throat there you and go. a cold of the flu and <laughs> <laughs> solve the whole thing in once. Just add it, yeah. Another story that comes to mind about oregano, um, as I'm thinking about your experiences in Crete, um, I was in Venezuela years ago and um, with an old grandmother type, amazing woman, and um, she she showed me the remedy. She had this big ear, she called it oregano orejon, big ear to oregano. And she would take a leaf and kind of chew it or grind it up and put it on her forehead and she said, for the headache. Hmm. Um, and so oregano is um, claimed with a lot of benefits of mental clarity and opening the nasal passageways and just opening the mind and it stimulates cerebral circulation. So any kind of tension, headache, um, or even just feeling like your head's full of cobwebs, oregano is a great choice. So would you also that. smell it? To, yes. to get that? Yeah, and the oregano orejon was so strong that you just put it on your forehead and you'd smell it right there. Mm. Um, but certainly, yeah, smell it and you know, hmm. put it on your head. and It's, it's wonderful, yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to um, blend it until it's smooth, and I might need to stir it, we'll see. So it's mostly ground up nicely, but one thing I'm noticing is that... There's one piece of garlic. Exactly. Oh. There's one piece of garlic. So I'm just going to push down the contents. This is a good practice anyway when you're making pesto or something. So some folks make their pesto kind of drier than this. Because I love the taste of good olive oil, this is like a nice... Yeah. I'm sure you would agree. I When I make pesto, I, I uh, do the garlic first separately. Yeah. And that way it doesn't... You don't get that... That's a great right. idea. Sometimes you can even do that with the herbs, and then it's more like yeah, yeah. I guess more like the chopping method. I guess we were talking about before, but I should have done that. So we might have a one larger piece of garlic in there. It's always good for the guests to have one, <laughs> one surprise piece. moment when you're eating an entire clove of garlic. It's true. <laughs> so and that's really all there is to it. Um, and then you know you can. Um, yeah. It smells amazing. Oh, good. I'm yeah. so glad. And that's, so again, there's the medicine. It's coming right in just the, the smell of it. We're already the, it's aromatherapy. It's affecting the olfactory senses and going right into the nervous system and helping us to relax. And going back to that, we are what we digest wisdom. Um, we digest better when we're relaxed. So any kind of food prep or in sensory experience while we're cooking that helps us to relax and enjoy ourselves is is medicinal. Which I never I never thought of the idea of peeling just by smelling so yeah. smelling an herb. That's amazing. So strong. And that's where the wisdom of this of cooking comes in. And then and then when it cooks you smell it and mm -hmm. fills the house and we feel not only does it support our digestion, but overall we feel just less stress and more love and mm -hmm. connection in our life, right? So So yeah. You would freeze this mm -hmm. and use it any time throughout the year. Obviously, yeah. we can have some right now. Yeah, but, of course. Um, what would you use it with or on yeah. when you're cooking? So anything from serving it with an appetizer spread of cheese or olives or crackers or bread to putting it on bread in a sandwich. Um, it has enough oil in it that you can actually use it as a marinade for like a meat-based dish or grilling vegetables, or my preference is often to put it on afterwards. So mm -hmm. I'll do like grilled vegetables and a steamed grain, and I'll put this on. So you won't cook the Yeah, yeah. exactly, and it's put it on to kind of keep the flavor really fresh and um, have just like a big dollop on, you know, with all that and mix it in. And um, we're gonna do my favorite. Taste it's, testing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Trying it I hope you right like at it. the beginning. This is a good moment too to taste for salt. You could always stir more salt in if you wanted. I'm gonna get a big dollop. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not the garlic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. So the, the flavor of the toasted seeds really comes through too. That's I would delicious. probably add a it's, little more salt. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's much uh, more mellow than I thought it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna be a little overpowering to have right? it just be oregano, but it's I perfect. know, mm. I think that you, I think that that is the thought with oregano that Often folks shy away from using a lot of it, and that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to put this recipe in the book to show that large amounts of oregano can just really be so palatable and delicious. So what, with uh, this pesto, what would be a medicinal dose, like if you mm -hmm. had a lung issue or you know, mm -hmm. a cold or something like that? So anywhere from one to two tablespoons. Um, what, when someone has a lot of congestion, nasal congestion or respiratory congestion, 
a hot tea is going to be the most effective because the heat of the tea really helps to loosen things up and move things. Um, but yeah, any, even one to two tablespoons of this would be considered a medicinal dose. And that's one of the things you can do is freeze this in ice cube trays so you literally have that dose awesome. ready to go. Um, but you know, this, I mean, I could eat this right now in a sitting, but once I get going, yeah, I make too. a bunch of batches and then I have some to freeze through the winter. Great. Uh, well, maybe um, if you don't mind, you could share with us the uh, recipe for the tea on our site yeah. as well in the blog post. Yeah. But we're going to have this recipe on Mediterranean living. Mm -hmm. And uh, the olive oil we use, of course, is the olive oil that we sell. And this is Brittany's book, The Herbalist Kitchen, which is an amazing book and very Thank well you. written and full of great stories and recipes. and. Um, Thank you so I just much. Love it so much. And where would you get that? Book? Um, it's available from any large bookseller, um, and I also sell it on my website, which is time like the herb timeherbal.com. So. Great. Well, thank you so much yeah. for sharing this, and I'm looking forward to eating more of this. So this is Bill Bradley from Mediterranean Living, and with Brittany Nickerson, and we'll see you next time.